Dies ist der Mauticast. Alles über Open Source Marketing Automation mit Mautic. Und das hier ist dein Gastgeber, Ecki Gümbel. Willkommen zum heutigen Mauticast. Heute ist ein ganz besonderer Tag, zumindest heute der Tag, an dem wir aufzeichnen, denn heute ist die Alpha von Mautic 3 endlich erschienen. Hey. Ja, Wahnsinn. Also wenn ihr es hört, ist das äh, Old News, aber... Die Geschichte geht natürlich weiter, also Alpha, danach kommt Beta, danach kommt Release mhm. und ähm, wir verlieren nachher im Interview ein paar Worte dazu und das Interview heute ist mit Ruth Chisley, mhm. der Community Manager von Mautic, was mal wieder ein weiteres spannendes Interview war. Vorab haben wir ein paar Themen, zum Beispiel wollte ich was über Contesting erzählen, aber ähm, im Moment ist eigentlich mein Kopf ganz woanders, nämlich schon fast auf der Skipiste. Mhm. Wir fahren als Agentur, oder viele von uns fahren nämlich eine ganze Woche lang in die Alpen zu einem Open-Source-Event, ähm, zu einem bekannten CMS. Welches? Darf ich hier nicht sagen, oder? Darf ich? <lacht> Ach, bestimmt. Ja, naja, jeder weiß. Typ und ein. <lacht> es gibt die T3-Board, das ist ein, ein schon sehr altes Event, was aber extrem cool ist, weil man da halt einfach die Community oder die Anwender oder wer auch immer ähm, sich eine ganze Woche trifft, ganz viel Spaß hat im Schnee, ob es jetzt äh, Ski oder Snowboard ist oder, oder einfach nur fotografieren oder Schneewandern und ähm, dann also Zeit zusammen verbringt, Leute gut kennenlernt und abends tatsächlich auch, wer will, ganz viel nörden kann, also äh, es gibt immer Vorträge und ähm, die Leute sitzen irgendwo und coden irgendwas oder, oder diskutieren Probleme oder diskutieren die Zukunft. Also ein, ein super Event, wo wir echt jedes Jahr dabei sind und was, wo ich auch immer denke, oh, für Mautige wäre das auch echt cool. Das ist auch eine internationale Geschichte durchaus, mhm. ähm, aber in den Alpen natürlich ganz günstig gelegen und morgen früh um 4 Uhr nachts geht's los. Oh je. Ja, ja, ja. Na gut, okay. Ähm, los geht's mit ähm, Cron-Testing. Das Problem von dem vor allem Leon mir immer äh, vorjammert, aber <lacht> ist folgendes, wenn ich ähm, Mautic Benutzer bin, also Kampagnen entwickle oder probiere oder so, aber keinen Kommandozeilenzugriff habe, dann ist es immer sehr elend, weil für jeden Keks muss ich immer warten, bis der Kron wieder gelaufen ist. Mhm. Also für die, die nicht so tief drinstecken, bestimmte Dinge wie äh, Segmentmitgliedschaft oder, oder Kron, äh, Schritte in Kampagnen werden ja nur zeitgesteuert ausgeführt. Uh, was total viel Sinn macht, weil das System dann sofort platzen würde. Mhm. Aber natürlich, wenn ich gerade mal eine E-Mail-Kampagne testen will und um, bei jedem Klick erstmal fünf Minuten oder je nachdem, wie das System eingestellt ist, warten muss, mhm. dann bin ich halt ruckzuck bei einer halben Stunde für einen ganz kleinen Test. Ist also der Wahnsinn. Und um, die meisten Leute, die so etwas dichter dran sind an der Technik, die behelfen sich dann, indem sie eine Kommandozeile offen ha haben und dann halt den entsprechenden Cronjob ausführen mhm. oder, oder Konsolenkommando ausführen, um, um was zu tun. Und wer das aber nicht hat, der ist verloren. Der, der braucht einfach viel Zeit und es ist ineffizient. Mhm. Und dieses Problem haben mehrere Leute angegangen, weil das natürlich jeder oder ganz viele Leute hat, äh, haben. Und es gibt dazu zwei Ansätze, die relativ unterschiedlich sind. Das eine ist äh, ein Ding, das heißt Mautic Cron Commands. Und ähm, ist im Prinzip eine Oberfläche nicht nur für Cron-Commands, sondern für Konsolenkommandos aller Art. Das hat vor kurzer Zeit der, der Virgil vorgestellt. Und ähm, mit Konsolenkommandos kann ich eben viel mehr machen, aber auch die Cron-Jobs, und zwar Cron-Jobs aller Art, nicht nur die üblichen drei Verdächtigen für Segmente und Kampagnen. Das ist total mächtig. Ist auch trivial erweiterbar. Ich kann also meine Konsolenkommandos, die ich haben will, jederzeit da reinschreiben. Das ist im Prinzip eine kleine PHP-Datei, die ich auf dem Server installiere und kann einfach draufklicken und das ausführen und bekomme auch das Feedback. Mhm. Natürlich muss äh, Max Ex Execution Time und sowas in PHP richtig eingestellt sein. Das Ganze ist gesichert über eine, eine Passphrase, über ein Shared Secret, was einfach in der URL mit übergeben wird. Ist also überhaupt nicht Mautic integriert, sondern einfach eine ganz kleine Web-Oberfläche, auf die ich draufklicken kann. Nifty, äh, total nützlich. Ich würde es ehrlich gesagt im Produktionsenvironment nicht einsetzen, guten Gewissens, zumindest nicht in einer ernsthaften Produktionsumgebung. Da ist immer nicht so gern gesehen, freifliegende PHP-Skript zu haben. Aber das muss man natürlich schauen, wie man da aufgestellt ist. Äh, jedenfalls sehr mächtig und immer einen Blick wert und kostet nichts. Mhm. 
Link natürlich in der Shownote. Und ähm, die andere Variante kommt von dem Steno Kusmani, äh, auch unter MTC XTND bekannt. Also einer der ganz alten Hasen in der Mautic-Entwicklung. Und der hat eine richtig schöne, tief in Mautic integrierte Lösung gebaut, wo ich dann in ein Segment reingehen kann und am Segment sagen kann, okay, update mal dieses Segment. Oder ich gehe in eine Kampagne und sage, triggere mal diese Kampagne oder, oder update die Kampagne. Okay. Und das ist halt für die Leute, die nicht so technisch sind, natürlich die bessere Variante. Das erste ist eher für die Leute, die zwar wissen, was, ich, was sie wollen, die mit Konsolenkommandos auch sicher umgehen können, die bloß keinen SSH-Zugriff haben. Mhm. Nun, für die hilft das total. Für die Leute, die aus gutem Grund keinen SSH-Zugriff haben, <lacht> äh, denen sollte man dann wirklich lieber die etwas äh, narrensichere Variante geben oder, mhm. oder sich selber gönnen. Das mhm. ist der Grundtester vom äh, Steno Kusmani. Kostet 19 Euro. Äh, ich glaube, das ist ähm, sehr, sehr vertretbar. Definitiv. Also ein No-Brainer. Kurze Frage. Mhm. Wäre das nicht was, zumindest diese Funktion rechte Maustaste klicken, aktualisiere das, was auch in Core gehören würde? Um, ja, wäre ein super Core-Feature. Ja, abgesehen davon ist nicht mit der rechten Maustaste. Ja, gut, <lacht> aber ne? Also, ja, mhm. ja. Ähm, ja für das Feature-Request. Also wenn er so nett wäre, das für den Core beizusteuern, dann... dann ähm, äh, ich glaube, ich muss mir das Rad nicht neu erfinden. Er hat das schon schick gemacht. Okay. Ich habe ein paar Wünsche da noch. Ähm, also vor allem, ich kann halt immer nur ein, eine Kampagne oder ein Segment äh, da anträgern. Es wäre manchmal auch bequemer, einfach zu sagen, okay, machen wir alle Kampagnen, ne? weil manchmal sind halt alle äh, mehrere beteiligt oder so und äh, man muss immer sich rein- und rausklicken und so. Also Convenience-mäßig geht da noch ein bisschen, aber eigentlich ist es halt super integriert, eine schicke Lösung, kostet fast nichts. Also einfach machen. Cool. Links in ja. den Shownotes, ne? Ja, total. Also hilft mega weiter. Habe ich mir schon immer gewünscht. Mhm. Mm, ja, ein paar weitere Kleinigkeiten im Bereich Mautic. Wir haben uns überlegt, wir wollen auch mal auf aktuelle Problemchen hinweisen, die so äh, in der Welt auftauchen. Das eine ist, ähm, dass die standardmäßig eingestellte IP-Erkennung, also die Geo-IP-Lösung, nämlich MaxMind als Datenbank seit Anfang des Jahres oder genau genommen Ende letzten Jahres nicht mehr zieht. Mhm. Der schafft es nicht mehr, sich neue Datenbanken von MaxMind zu ziehen, weil die ihre Policy umgestellt haben. Es ist zwar weiterhin kostenfrei, aber man muss sich registrieren. Man kann es nicht einfach so runterladen. Ah. So, das heißt, Mautic versucht dann über einen alten Weg das runterzuladen und äh, fällt auf die Nase und dann hat man gar keine IP-Daten mehr und die Geolocation funktioniert nicht mehr. Mhm. Ähm, ja, ist halt irgendwie vorher keinem aufgefallen, weil man natürlich auch weil kein Mensch bei MaxMind dauernd guckt, ob die was ändern. Und ähm, da gibt es jetzt auch einen Pull-Request, also einen Patch sozusagen, den man äh, schon mal installieren kann, wenn man es wieder zum Laufen bringen will. Mhm. Und ähm, ja, für, für den, der sowieso was anderes nutzt oder der es aus anderen Gründen gar nicht nutzt, ist egal, aber für alle, die es vermissen, äh, die sollten es natürlich zügig einspielen, weil sonst äh, für einen ganzen Zeitraum die IPs halt, äh, die, die Geolocation viel, fehlt. Mhm. Gut, Link in Show Notes, wie immer. Und ebenfalls äh, Links, diverse Links in den Show Notes haben wir zum folgenden Thema, nämlich ähm, es gibt ein sehr cooles Ding, nämlich äh, seit, seit der 15.0 oder so, 15 irgendwas, dass man Kampagnen äh, auch wieder neu durchlaufen oder mehrfach durchlaufen kann. Mhm. Also ein Schalter, der in der Kampagne erlaubt, dass ein Kontakt mehrfach durchlaufen kann. Mhm. Das ist für manche Leute total wichtig oder in manchen Fällen total wichtig. Funktioniert aber nicht so ganz reibungslos. Schade, schade, schade. Ähm, okay. Auch da gibt es äh, Infos, was zu tun ist und Pull-Request, also ein Patch, den man einspielen kann und äh, auch da Link in den Show Notes zu den Foren und GitHub-Aufzeichnungen. Mhm. Gut. Ja, ich würde sagen, wir springen direkt ins Interview mit der Ruth. Ähm, da geht es ja im Großen und Ganzen, also eigentlich nur um Community, deswegen heute keine weiteren Community-Themen, sondern auf geht's zum Interview. So, we've mentioned your name many times here on the podcast. Today it is my pleasure to have her here in person. Ruth Cheesley, welcome. Hello, thank you. Ruth, you're the... Community Manager of the Mordic Project, and I'd like to talk to you about that a little bit, and uh, also all the context of the Mordic community. Before we do that, 
why don't you give us a little background, like uh, how did you become a community manager and what did you do before that? Sure. So I've been involved in open source for about 18 years now, which is quite surprising when I look back and figure that out, um, since the early days when I was at university. And I mostly have been involved in the Joomla project. And through volunteering in the Joomla project, I ended up being part of the community leadership team for about three years. And uh, D.B. Hurley, who's the founder of Mortic, was on the product leadership team, a uh, production leadership team at the same time. So I came to hear about Mortic quite early on and got involved with the Mortic project pretty much when it launched as a contributor. So kind of testing it, raising issues, helping with documentation um, and being active in the community. So that's probably what, maybe four or five years worth of involvement with the community. And when Acquia acquired uh, Mortic Inc, um, a few months later there was an opportunity for a community manager to help, uh, help the community kind of um, start engaging more fully and facilitating that to happen and also being a bridge between Acquia and the community. So I started that role in August and um, before that I was doing various marketing contracts and had run a digital agency for seven years. Um, so that's sort of where my background has been in digital, digital projects, web projects, marketing projects and so forth. Okay, cool. And uh, in my, my opinion, honestly, uh, Acquia couldn't have made a better choice. I, I'm, I think you're, you're really, really doing a fantastic job. Uh, but for those who don't know, uh, please give us an overview first of that role, of, of the tasks of a community manager. Wow. Yeah, there's a question. Um, I think it varies based on the community, but... Um, my, my role is primarily to um, make sure that the community is effective and that, that can involve everything from um, getting the forums back online. So that was pretty much my first task so that there's a place for the community to, to uh, talk to each other and support each other through to um, helping implement things like a governance model. So based on my experience and the experience of other people in open source, of how different projects have, have managed their governance, sort of trying to figure out what would work for Mortic, through to organizing events, promoting the project at different conferences, so people who don't know about Mortic come across it. Um, and I also work closely with D.B. Hurley, who's the product lead um, on, his more focused on the technical side of the releases and what have you, but we work very closely to um, empower community to get involved wherever they can get involved in the project. Yeah, you don't consider yourself a developer, right? But I know you're a pretty technical person nonetheless, right? That's right. So I, the way I explain it is that I'm technical enough to be dangerous and that may be doing myself some discredit, but I definitely wouldn't consider myself as an engineer or a developer, but I um, do know enough to kind of work with Git and um, find my way around the code and what have you. Yeah, <laughs> confirmed. Okay, I'd like to focus a little bit on the community building part. Um, and I have to give full disclosure first, I'm also part of the community team in the Mordic project. So I have a little bit of insights there. Um, in a recent podcast here, we had uh, Rodrigo, uh, who's an active community member in, in Brazil. Um, and um, there are certain types of community places over here in, in Germany. We had multiple, well, we, we have multiple distinct places where people gather in Brazil. It is completely different in other countries as well. So over here, it's from Facebook all the way to monthly online user group meetings. Um, in total, it's certainly a good thing to be diverse, but uh, things seem randomly scattered at this point and also hard to find at times. 
So do you have any plans to support those local communities more and maybe making them more, more accessible, give better visibility, more structure, whatever? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, actually. And I think um, my experience from other communities and other projects is that the, um, the important thing is that people can find out how to uh, connect with other people nearby who have similar interests, whether that's be because they um, need some help with the problem or they want to learn more about it. But the local communities are really important. And uh, at the moment, things are a little bit fragmented. There hasn't been like a clear process for, or even clear definitions of what an official MORTIC meetup is. And that's something the community team have been working on defining. We're actually working on that right at this moment. But in today's day and age, there's also the online world as well. So we're working on ways that we can make that easier for people to go to a place and find all the in-person meetups from Autic and go to a place and find, say, all the online uh, ones as well. And I think the important thing here is that we are very clear that these groups are for the benefit of the community and they're not just a lead generating opportunity for a business. So setting some guidelines around kind of like what we expect from people who are running an official group um, will hopefully help with that because some of the groups are veering more towards um, something that's more focused for businesses rather than the community and that's not really something we want to encourage. Um, yeah, but true. Yeah. It's the same problem when I started looking around, find, find places to connect. There are groups in, in Facebook and, uh, and LinkedIn and all over the place. Um, and some of them are dead. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them are really just just fame or, or lead generation or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty hard to, to find out which are the actual uh, places to go. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. So and also, making that easier is a good, good idea. Yeah. Also, because Mortic itself is a trademark term, we actually have to manage that trademark if we want to maintain it. So if people want to call themselves a Mortic meetup, that's great. But they do actually need to be working within the guidelines to be in a, to use that term. Um, so we're trying to find ways to be uh, positive and constructive and help people um, with resources, with guidance, with uh, being able to generate awareness of the group so that they get more people turning up and help with things like sharing information about speakers who might be willing to come and do a session um, at a meetup. Because running a meetup is can be quite challenging, you know, like yeah. um, finding topics and what have you. Sorry. When you say meetup, uh, on, on the website, uh, we only see the team at Morty Camp at this point. Can, can, is, there, is this the same thing or can you explain the difference? Yeah, so what we're proposing, and this is still in the proposal phase in the community team, and anyone can get involved in the community team and have their say uh, just by turning up at one of the meetings. But what we're proposing is that um, Mortic meetups are the in-person kind of like physical meetings of other morticians in, their, in a geographical region and they will be focused around like a town or a region not a country uh, so it might be in my case Mortic Meetup Ipswich or Mortic Meetup Essen or Sydney or what have you. Um, That's on a regular basis right? On a regular basis in person and in a physical location and we're aiming for those to be managed through a meetup.com pro account. Uh, so that the cost of running that will be covered by Acquia as a sponsor. And um, that will mean that we also get the reach that Meetup offers of promoting it to other people who are interested in marketing, marketing, marketing automation and so forth. But then in-person meetups would be, I think we decided to call it Mortic, Mortic Meetup in brackets online. And that could be across a multiple countries, regions, it could be people who have the same language in common. Um, so that's much more flexible. And they would mainly be promoted through the community forums as a meetup category there. So they would have a category within the forum and also be on the website. 
under community events. And then Morty Camps, which is what um, there was some confusion in the past over that terminology. We have suggested that they be kind of like local or regional uh, conferences, smaller conferences. So maybe um, people in Central Europe might want to come together for a couple of days um, for an, un, you know, like not a Morty Con, which is going to be another thing, but something like a small regional event. And that would be a Morty Camp. So it's following a similar structure to what they do in the WordPress community in terms of their naming convention. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, tell me more about that, that Morty Con. It has been. Uh, I think there's even a Slack group for it, but, but it's been pretty, pretty silent lately. Yeah, so that's something that we're hoping to organize this year, and we're just in the very, very, very early stages of talking about that. It would be uh, the annual conference for all things Mortic. So it would be, my vision is that it would be just as interesting for someone who is uh, a developer in Mortic as it would be for someone who is implementing or managing Mortic for someone who is interested in marketing automation. Um, and yeah, the idea is that it would be an annual conference, um, formal kind of conference with tracks and speakers and what have you. But we're at the very, very early stage, so if people are interested in helping organizing that, then they can hop on the Slack channel. And uh, I think we've been discussing that in the community team from memory. So you, you are aiming to, to do that this year, really? Wow, love it. That's cool. the aim, yes. Obviously, there's quite a lot to organize when you're planning a, a large event. So that's the kind of where we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Love it, really. Uh, so you mentioned the community team uh, already. That's that's part of the official modic structures, yeah. um, or sometimes we refer to it as a the global community. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the the that, that structure in total and the governance model and, and all that? Yeah, absolutely. So. If people want to find more about this, they can go on the mortic.org website and under the community tab, there's a link to governance. So you can kind of read the overview and also read the initial proposal and the comments that went back and forth during the consultation. That's all linked from this page. Mm -hmm. So I put it in the show notes. Sorry? I put that on the show notes. Excellent. So the structure that we have in the community is we have five teams. Uh, the teams are co the community team, which we've been talking about, the education team, who look after uh, the forums, internationalization and documentation uh, currently, the legal and finance team, which is fairly self-explanatory, they look after the trademark and, and the finance, um, the marketing team, and the product team. So. That is what was proposed and all kind of, we came to the decision in the community sprint last year that that was the most sensible um, uh, structure in terms of teams. And um, that allows people, effectively what we will have is working groups within those teams. At the moment we're kind of functioning at a team level because we um, haven't really got to the point yet where we have enough people to form working groups. So it's a great opportunity for people to, to get involved. Um, and then we also have, we'll have steering groups for a community and for the product and a community council, which will have four community members and four people from Acquia working together on kind of big picture issues, the decisions that need to be taken about the community. So the idea is it gives us a way for people to get involved from the local communities if they want to help with translating or they want to help with uh, doing the social media campaign and then coming up into the teams and then going up potentially going up into the council and it gives people a way to kind of contribute and see how that they can have a say in the project. Yeah, in my opinion the fact that the modern community has been reinventing itself in the, in the process of, of the acquisition like last year um, was really valuable. It was a valuable discussion. It was a great outcome. 
and of course it's still the early stages but but the structure is really sustainable and i personally personally love this love the this uh, setup and uh love to see the teams growing and, and get more things done and i think it's only a question of time um so I, I but but as you said the critical factor there is to get more people involved mm -hmm. to get more people to understand what it means and how to get started yep. and maybe also to uh reach out to the local communities and, and help them um extending their their coverage and and uh join the the, the global community or, or co do more global contribution too mm. there are, there are issues like the language issues uh which which uh, Rodrigo uh, brought up for the Brazil com community and we will see how to deal it deal with that but but this from local to global is, is a big thing isn't it yeah it is and i think so one of the ways we're trying to address this because it's not only the language it's also the time zone the cultural side of things and you know like it's not just language um one of the ways we're trying to address this is by having the majority of our meetings on slack asynchronously so The agenda item will be posted and then responses can be put in a um, reply to that thread. And that means if if you're not that confident of speaking English, you can run it through Google Translate, perhaps, to make sure that you understand rather than have to keep pace with the conversation. Um, and it also means if the meeting's happening in a time zone that's not great for you, although we are flipping between mornings and evenings every other week to... Uh, help that you can join in at a later date and still give your comments and feedback on on the meetings and then uh, once a month at the end of the month the last two meetings will be a, a video call so we're trying to find ways that help people who um, may not may have some barriers to getting involved very good so when you say morning or evening Uh, I have to add that you are currently based in the UK, right? That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so what is the best way for people to get involved in order to, to do more contribution? Where to get started? Well, I mean, the first place to start would be to join the community channel on Slack. And if you're not yet on the Mortic Slack, you can go to mortic.org forward slash Slack and you can put your email address in and get an invitation because that's kind of a central place for all discussions about community. And then if you're interested in a specific team, if you go to the governance link, which is under the community uh, menu item, you can see the teams. If you click on them, you can go to the forum description that explains what that team's responsible for. And if you say you're interested in the education team, maybe you've got an I experience in writing documentation or would like to help, then you can join the education team's Slack channel, which all of the teams are prefaced with T dash. So that would be T dash education. And then just hop on one of the meetings. Um, all of our work is on Trello on a public team with public boards. So you can access that at trello.com slash Mortic community, all one word. So you can see what all of the teams are working on. So also if there's something you would like to take up, we've got a couple of blog posts, for example, that we need writers for. You can just hop into Slack and say, hey, I'd like to write this article and then assign it to yourself in Trello and, and uh, the team will support you with that. Mm. We don't yet have uh, specific people identified uh, in every team to, to act as, as a godfather or, so, <laughs> or to, to answer questions of, to, uh, fr from those who are potentially interested. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but um, we, we have that agreement that anybody raises his hand or her hand and, and says... Um, I I am considering helping out, but I don't know what to do. Or then uh, there will be a specific person working with you, um, and and uh, answer your questions and give give you ideas for what what to do first. Because because doing an actual tangible thing 
rather than, than being there abstract and listening to other people's conversation. For me, as a, in, in, in my world, that, that's a much better start and, and much better feeling. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have asked each team to identify someone who will be work, who will be effectively like the onboarding person, yep. and that will rotate every couple of weeks, so it's not the same person. Um, at the moment, it's mostly going to be me, but I will be working with someone in each team to make sure that there's a process for onboarding. In the development side of things, that's slightly different because we have got people who can help with making the first commits, making the first PRs and so on and so forth. Um, but the other parts of the community is probably me or someone in the team who has said they'll be the onboarding person. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for that part. Is there anything else you want to talk about today? We'll Ah, good uh, question. I'm not running out of time yet, but, but uh, I think we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Um, so I guess one thing to mention is that if you are interested in starting up a local community near you, maybe you don't know of anyone else in your local area, the best thing to do really is to go onto the forums and look at the Mortic in your country. There's an international Mortic in your country forum and just drop a post in there. Um, because that's a good place for people to connect with others nearby and figure out if there's interest in starting up a group. And if your country isn't there, you can just drop me a message on Slack and we can add it. Um, just in case people are wondering, like, what's the initial starting point for setting up the communities? And in terms of finding out the team meetings and things like that, they're all pasted on, they're all posted on mortic.org under community and then community events so you can find them all there so that's just something a follow-up point um, okay and i guess then the big piece of news that everyone's looking forward to is the release of mortic 3. Ooh. so that's been something that's been worked on since november i think it is and we did some work on that in the community summit which kicked everything off and I have it on good authority from Alan Hartless, who was on this podcast a little while ago, that the Alpha, is they're planning to release a very early access Alpha on the 10th of January, so this Friday, for a week of testing. Oh, that's uh, so when this podcast airs, it, it is hopefully already out. Yes. And so there'll, there'll be a week of testing, and then ideally, providing no big showstoppers come up, then the beta which is kind of like more open access would be 17th of January and that will have a two weeks testing period. So assuming everything goes to plan and assuming that people test and on a testing environment, not on your live environment, we'll probably be looking at a full release in the first week of February. Obviously conditional that nothing major comes up from the alpha and beta testing. And uh, that will include instructions for migration from two to three? Yeah, that's right. So the information, uh, my understanding at the moment is that the information is going to be provided in a uh, file within the repository, an upgrade file, which is the same way Symfony deals with instructions on how to migrate. Um, so yes, information. And um, we're in the process of putting together a blog post which will explain to developers and administrators what they need to know. Cool. Yeah, that's good news. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah, and then um, hopefully after that we'll also be looking at developing a roadmap post Mortic 3 for features and dealing with the outstanding pull requests because many of those will probably need to be refactored given the changes in the code for Mortic 3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but one step after the other and um, yeah, absolutely. all this, this, this is huge backlog of pull, pull requests and, and issues and so on it needs to be re reviewed first and, and then there's a lot of work coming up, but, but, but I'm really, really looking forward to that. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, when you said drop me a line, um, how can people reach you best? Uh, you can message me on Slack. So I'm Arch Easley or on the forums as well. 
and my email address is uh, we can pop that in the show notes I guess ruth.cheesley at mortic.org or at acquia.com yeah I'll do that yeah. or social media or whatever but those are the best ways to contact me yeah it's plenty <laughs> <laughs> okie doke thank you so much for today you're welcome thank you Valuable for having insights. me and uh, I look forward to welcome more people in, in the global teams and then see everything grow and and Uh, yeah, thanks for your work. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Bye bye. Ja, cool. Bleiben wir gleich nochmal bei dem letzten Thema, was die Ruth erzählt hat. Mautic 3 Alpha am 10. Januar mhm. und ähm, danach die Beta und Release. Ja. Das ist natürlich im Bereich Coming Up das Allerwichtigste. Wie sieht es denn aus mit Mautic 3? Wann ist es endlich da? Der Zeitplan des Mautic 3 Teams ist jetzt total ambitioniert. Sie haben sich tatsächlich äh, vorgenommen, innerhalb von wenigen Wochen das alles rauszuhauen. Mhm. Und ähm, wenn es alles gut läuft und keine Showstopper auftauchen, dann geht das halt im Wochen oder in, im Abstand äh, von einer Woche zur Beta und im Abstand von zwei Wochen zum Release. Mhm. Ich selber würde da jetzt nicht drauf wetten, es kann immer irgendwas passieren. Also baut bitte nicht eure eure Projektplanung auf dieser Zeitplanung auf. Ja. Aber wenn es in Best Case läuft, dann, dann hätten wir halt schon irgendwann mitten im Februar, ähm, nee, jetzt habe ich mir verrechnet, Anfang Februar oder so, die, die Mautic 3. Krass. Was natürlich cool wäre. Ja. Und was auch heißt, ähm, bitte, äh, also wer, wer schnell mit der Mautic 3 starten will, der sollte bitte auch zügig anfangen zu testen. Ich habe ja schon mal erzählt, testen geht sogar schon ähm, jetzt, zumindest soweit es die, die Plugins angeht. Mhm. Ähm, für jeden, der mit der Mautic 3 mal rumspielen will, ist die Alpha geeignet. Für jemanden, der die Migration testen will von seiner jetzigen Installation zu Mautic 3, da würde man immer die Beta empfehlen. Mhm. Auch das natürlich nur, um es zu probieren um, um, und um frühzeitig auf Probleme zu stoßen. Ja. Und äh, sicherlich nicht irg irgendwas mit live machen mit der Beta. Und selbst wenn die Release-Version da ist, natürlich auch nochmal ordentlich testen. Aber das ist jetzt alles im Abstand von wenigen Wochen und ähm, ich glaube, wenn wir uns dreimal umgucken, haben wir das Thema auch schon hinter uns. Mhm. Haben vielleicht ein paar Kinderkrankheiten, wie mit jedem neuen Major-Release und dann ist das Thema endlich durch. Oh, Aber es ey. ist ergreifbar. Ja, ja super. Ja, ja, mhm. lange drüber gesprochen. Mhm. Ja, um, was gibt es noch im Bereich Coming Up? Um, es gibt natürlich den, den Mautic Events Kalender, also mautic.org slash events, mehrfach erwähnt jetzt, der ist inzwischen voll mit lauter Team-Meetings. Mhm. Wer da um, ein bisschen überwältigt ist von, der hat oben eine kleine Checkbox und kann sagen, alle äh, regelmäßig wiederkehrende Meetings bitte nur einmal anzeigen. Das ist also ein ganz mhm. heißer Tipp. Ähm, was man auch in den Events findet, ist zum Beispiel unsere deutsche oder deutschsprachige User Group. Äh, das nennt sich ja inzwischen Mautic Meetup Online mhm. für die Dachregion. Mhm. Und auch das ist natürlich ein regelmäßiger Termin. Aber wer noch aktiver erinnert werden möchte, der kann auf mauticamp.de gehen. Da gibt es eine Reminder-Funktion, kann man seine E-Mail-Adresse hinterlegen und dann wird man immer noch mal zweimal vorab per E-Mail erinnert, auch wenn es mal eine Zeitverschiebung gibt oder so, steht das in der E-Mail drin. Also mauticamp.de, auch das in den Shownotes, da könnt ihr euch einen Reminder setzen lassen, wenn ihr bei der User Group dabei sein wollt. Super. Gut. Und noch, noch ein weiterer letzter Tipp. Ähm, es gibt für die Team-Meetings also die, die globalen Mautic Team Meetings, ein Google Kalender, ähm, auch dafür, davon der Link äh, an bekannter Stelle, nämlich den Show Notes. Mhm. Ähm, und diesen kann man nicht nur angucken, sondern man kann ihn auch abonnieren und hat dann automatisch alle Team Meetings in seinem eigenen Kalender, was extrem cool ist, wenn man sowieso Teammitglied ist oder wenn man mal einen Termin sucht, um da mal dabei sein zu können. Super gut. Ja. Die allermeisten, wie schon erwähnt, sind ja inzwischen asynchron. Einmal im Monat gibt es so, in jedem Team so ein Live-Meeting mhm. mit asynchroner Fortsetzung. Aber diese Async-Meetings, die sind halt super, um die Leute rund um den Erdball mitnehmen zu können und nicht an der Zeitzonenproblematik zu scheitern. Also das hat sich schon bewährt. Gut, ja. Ähm, ich glaube, da sind wir durch für heute. Mhm. Hast du noch was, Thomas? Nee, ich hätte sonst nichts. Prima. Dann freuen wir uns auf in zwei Wochen mit einem weiteren spannenden Interview. Bis dahin, macht's gut. Ciao. Tschüss. 